What's up and welcome to Nostalgia Predicts, giving you uh, another year of predicting the 94th Academy Awards. I am Pat Sheehan, joined by my co-host and uh, Schwami, Oscar Schwami, Dave Martin Swagger. Dave, how you doing, man? Doing good, man. Got to make those picks, those gambling picks. I actually would like to bet on the Oscars. Just because I feel like I have a very educated opinion on the matter, but I never do. We've uh, we've made some good calls in the past. I think probably. I mean, what what do you think is like the best call you've made? Oh, see, it's hard to remember what I wanted to pick and what I actually picked. Sometimes yeah. they're different, you know. I'm trying to remember, was I picking Parasite? So uh, I, I definitely wanted it. I don't remember if I picked it. You have a very famous one. The first year we did this, picking the Ex Machina screenplay yeah. victory. That was a great one. That was that was by, by far my, my that my feather in my cap, the largest one for sure. I feel like you you've had some good calls with screenplay as well. I think I feel like there was one. Uh, it's hard to remember. They all blend together. We've done so many. Go back and listen to them all. YouTube.com slash nostalgia pod. And Dave, this 94th Academy Awards, <laughs> following the 93rd, which is a bit, you know, in, a bit of a debacle in retrospect. I mean, obviously a weird year, COVID year, but you had a couple of things that you just had to have go right. You just had to have them go right. Chadwick Boseman had to win that final award to have, you know, the best actor award be the final one. <laughs> and when Anthony Hopkins won, I mean, it was just a t- basically the the cherry on top of a pretty underwhelming Sunday. Obviously, a COVID year, so it's really hard to say it, is this going to be the trend. But box office again continued to be smaller, given the the state of COVID throughout the past year, and movies continued to be all at home and we kind of enter this Oscars, it, it feels like it needs to be a big one. And I don't know if, if these nominations and this award show is set up to really pull viewers back in. I mean, Amy Schumer, Regina Hall, and Wanda Sykes are hosting, not necessarily big names. They're going to draw in a crowd that probably isn't there to see who wins for the movies anyway. So yeah, wh- where are you at with just where the award show is at in general? Yeah, well, I mean, the matter of the hosts... That one's tough. You know, a lot of like the easy calls like Zendaya and Tom Holland, they're fucking busy, man. They can't host the Oscars. (laughs) There's a lot of prep that goes into it. You don't just show up and do it one night, you know. So I understand that, you know, one day I'd love to get like them or get The Rock, you know, get someone in. It's hard, but I'm happy they're bringing back hosts. I think it's a good idea, Um, especially given what we've had. And like you said last year, you even forgot the, the the other side of the coin. Not only does Hopkins upset Chadwick, which was a legitimate upset given what had happened thus far, Hopkins wasn't present at the Oscars. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So he didn't even get to accept it and win. You know, we get the video the next day when he's very gracious, you know. And Hopkins is well earned. He's excellent the father. But like, just like the whole broadcast, the tenor, the rhythm of it just was off, you know. Which and they took a chance with Soderbergh, you know, kind of EPing it and everything. But here we are, and yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, movies are just not making the widespread cultural footprint that they once did in society for a myriad reasons. Award shows, broadly, same thing, including the Oscars. As you imagine, there's just less movie mind share, and the movie mind share that does exist seems to. Uh, continue to be a much smaller group of films dominated by stuff like Marvel and other franchise movies. So, you know, if people aren't watching the movies, it is what it is. You should at least focus on the people that are watching the movies, which is why there's a lot of criticism of the Oscars telecast announced change that as of the time of recording is still on where a bunch of awards will be given out, not live and cut together for the broadcast, you know, in an effort to speed up and keep the runtime down and all that. And it's like, you know, I don't, I don't think 
someone who wants to watch the Oscars isn't going to watch the Oscars if it's suddenly 15 minutes over time. On the other side, I don't think someone who doesn't watch the Oscars will suddenly watch it when they realize it's not as long as it used to be. You know, there's like nothing right. you're ganging from this. I would be okay with the call if we did the much hope for uh, increase in uh, awards, you know? Let's get a best stunt performance award. Let's get a first time feature award, breakthrough yeah. performance. If we added those additional awards, I'd be okay making some, uh, you know, broadcast changes and moving some things to the side. I could handle that. But they're not doing that. They're just moving things over for marginal gain. And yeah, you're going to piss some people off when you have a Amy Schumer joke that doesn't land taking up time that could have been dedicated to someone winning best sound, you know? So it's a fraught thing. The Academy uh, figures things out over time. It's a big group, 10,000 people. Do they? I don't know if they do. <laughs> they combine, uh, I don't, I don't they combine sound, which I think to everyone apart from sound engineers, we all are happy about that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and I suppose, you know, making it 10 mandatory films for yep. uh, Best Picture is also a... a move in a positive direction uh they are also the same people who put out the uh you know the twitter poll for most popular film which <laughs> we spoke about a, a, at an earlier pod this month or maybe his last month uh quite a debacle there so <laughs> i think the academy uh sometimes stumbles into things and sometimes falls flat in their face but alas yeah i mean the, the other thing too is like the Academy continues to change. It's actually to the point now where the majority of the Academy membership has joined from 2011 onward. And as we know, it's a much more diverse, much more international group of people in the filmmaking community that are in the Academy now. And we're seeing those changes with nominations, wins, et cetera. We'll talk about more of that as it goes. But, you know, it is what it is. You have 10,000 people from all over the place doing all kinds of things in movie making. It's just a big amalgam of people, you know? And Spider-Man's not getting nominated. It's hard to get that kind of consensus, you know? Um, it is what it is. I don't know. But alas, uh, we're still getting it. I still like the Oscars. I still cause I, But I like movies, you know? If you don't like movies, if you don't watch a lot of movies, why would you really care about the Oscars? You know, unless you like really like Will Smith, watch him win Best Actor. If that's not your thing, then yeah, I don't know what it's there for for you. You know, if there's no performances like the Grammys that are something like more tangible, I guess you know. Until next year when Four Town performs, so that'll yeah, be uh, let's go. That'll be turning great rad. to see. Um, yeah, so we're going to go through the categories. Uh, some we'll, we'll spend a little bit more time in than others. I think it's important to note, last year, the BAFTAs, which just happened this past weekend, I think had 18 of the 19 categories where the winner was the same. So we will be probably referring back to the results from this past weekend quite a bit, but do you expect there to be that much overlap this year? No. No. Uh, to that very point, the best actress feel at the BAFTAs, zero of those nominees are nominated for the Academy Award for Best Actress. Insane. Hilarious to see something be such a non-factor in that yeah. fashion. Um, but I have noted all the winners at the various Guild Awards and other award precursor awards to this point to uh, reflect on because voting doesn't actually begin until March 17th and goes until March 22nd. So everything that has happened to this point can perhaps affect voter opinion uh, in some way. And we were recording this a little bit early, so we still haven't had the Producers Guild Awards or the Writers Guild Awards actually happen yet, but everything else has happened. So why don't we start down the ballot a bit with Best Documentary Feature. And... There's, there seems to have been like a surefire favorite for this for a long time. Summer of Soul, I think for me, feels like it has a really good shot. But there's been some momentum for some other films a little bit. I think Flea in particular feels like one that stood out. 
where are you leaning in this category? What do you think is going to take you home? Yeah, it's probably going to be Summer of Soul, which did win the BAFTA. There's not a ton of like precursor awards for this. Flea, as you said, is also nominated for International Feature Film, nominated for Animated Film as well. And Attica, actually, the director of Attica won the DGA for directing over Summer of Soul. But still feels like probably Summer of Soul. You know, the Questlove doc had so much fanfare ever since it premiered. But I don't know if this is quite as like, I, uh, you know, iron and shut the way past years have been where like the doc winner is like super obvious, like from a while back, like my octopus teacher, American factory or something. I don't know if it's quite that year. Could be in for a surprise. We, we could be. I still think the smart money's on summer of soul. Don't, don't get too crazy in this category. You mentioned fleas in the best animated feature category as well. Do you have a, a pick for that? This one I find very interesting because there's been a lot of wealth spread. Um, Encanto won the BAFTA, won the Golden Globe. Flea won the Annie Award for Independent Film. And the Mitchells vs. Machines won the main Annie Award, which is the Animators Guild. And Mitchells vs. Machines also won the Critics' Choice Award. And Flea is not nominated at the PGAs. Kind of a weird one, right? You know, usually Disney, Pixar Disney, or just Disney, has a bit of a strangle held on this category with few exceptions, like if a Spider-Verse comes up, you know? So I'm not exactly rooting for Encanto, because I actually had Mitchell's vs. Machines higher on my list. That's who I'd want to see win. But it's, I feel like it's a tough call, honestly, you know? It's hard, to, it's hard, it's hard to pick sure. against Disney, though. Yeah. I mean, I, I understand the the spreading of the wealth and really not being sure. And honestly, I think this is a stack category. I mean, yeah. Ryan, the last dragon was phenomenal. We, we yes. loved it. Go check out our review. Uh, probably has no shot in this category. And so it, it's kind of crazy uh, to have the stack to a field and to feel like if Encanto doesn't win, I would be shocked. I mean, the, the soundtrack alone has been huge. Uh, I have to imagine a lot of these, um, uh, voters have children or at least children in their lives in some way and I think that's going to really drive Great. Encanto win for sure we might as well skip to best original song while we're here <laughs> yeah uh, we don't talk about Bruno was not <laughs> submitted for best original song they submitted uh, Dos uh, Organitas instead uh, and then of course Bruno exploded became the number one mm -hmm. song in the country still dominating the charts right now you have to figure that Encanto Momentum will will be leading to a an Oscar for the film and for Lin Manuel Miranda, nonetheless. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that that kind of like synergy across categories, just broader awareness, is probably the biggest like feather in the Encanto cap, as or. Yeah, you know, I was just looking at the nominees here, I mean, big names: Billy Eilish, Van Morrison, Beyonce, obviously Lin Manuel, uh, Billy might be back next year if uh, we get a four town nomination which uh, <laughs> you know i i kind of hope we do <laughs> yeah i mean don't totally bet against no time to die just because that did win the grammy equivalent yeah. of like this category last you know like last year um on the other hand it's like been out so long that maybe it's like old news to voters tough to say but yeah pro probably going to be a double encanto win for song and animated feature yeah, I think we have a, a good shot at that. Um, so best international feature, you know, you mentioned Flea is also in this category. Drive My Car, The Hand of God, Lunana, and The Worst Person in the World. Uh, I've seen four of these, or no, sorry, I've seen three of these five. You've seen four of these five. Yep. Um, what do you feel is going to take this home? Yeah, so stack category, great category. Love a lot of these movies. Obviously, this is 100% going to be Drive My Car because Drive My Car is also nominated for Best Picture yeah. and Best Adapted Screenplay and Best Director. So yeah, how does this not win this category? Open and shut. This is much like yeah. Parasite, you know, a few years back. Uh, worst Person in the World, probably second because it's also nominated for uh, Screenplay. But yeah, uh, this is Drive My Car, justly earned movies, immaculate, so good. So yeah, that, this one's a little boring in that regard. There's no suspense here. 
Uh, yeah, I agree. I think this is drive my car. It probably it probably is, has even odds wherever you're betting. So, um, we're we're skipping the technicals only because it feels pretty certain it's probably just going to be Dune. They've pretty much swept most of the world. Yeah. So that's fine. Yeah. Visual effects keeping Marvel uh, goose egg going in that category. Sound for sure. Production design probably. Score, I think notable because this would be Hans Zimmer's first dub in the category somehow. How? Crazy. How? Yeah, for someone so famous, arguably the second most famous movie composer after like John Williams, you know, like mm-hmm. the fact that he actually hasn't won despite many nominations is kind of crazy to consider. But it'll be rectified and it's a great score, so very well earned. Um Yep. You know, I think uh, oh, cinematography, I think for sure, very safe for Dune. Yep. Edit film editing probably less so, you know, Power of the Dog could be in there if it has a huge night on the way to best picture. But yeah, I think Dune is like basically the Mad Max Fury Road of this year where a lot of technical wins go into the movie for sure. Yeah, you know, I think one category in the technicals that it may not take home um, might be uh, make- makeup and hairstyle. Yeah, um, of course. You know, I would love to see Cruella get some love here or House of Gucci. But yeah. if, if, we're get- if Chastain gets the win later on, I think you're going to kind of know if Tammy Faye brings this one home. And I think this probably is a good shot. Tammy yeah, Faye. that's exactly right. That's the synergy there. And, you know, costume design, that's probably Cruella's best chance. Kind of funny to think like Cruella coming out as the front runner for a costume design. Not what I would have thought of, you know, but <laughs> yeah, cool to see the wealth being spread around in that way. Kind of harkens back to when uh, the first Suicide Squad movie one yeah. for i believe makeup and hairstyling yep absolutely uh you know just as you were talking one of the things i i we, we talk about all the time i think every time we do this i want to see the voting i want to see oh, you yeah. know what, what what comes in second what comes in third show yeah. us the votes you just a breakdown us. you don't have to put people yeah. on blast but give us a breakdown of like the percentages or threshold or something preferential Ooh. balloting obviously is a big play in this so it'd just be cool to have more information Absolutely. Um, all right. So we, we, we're moving past the technicals into the meaty stuff. Best original screenplay. Mm. So we're looking here at Belfast, Don't Look Up, King Richard, Licorice Pizza, and the worst person in the world. Um, a bit of recency bias, I'd say. I would love to see the worst person in the world win this. Do I want to plant my flag there? I don't know. The, uh, the screenplay has been good to me in the past. Maybe this is it. I don't know. What are, where are you leaning in this category? Yeah. So this is it, it, the screenplay is always a little hard because depending on the the year, the writers' guild is not awards are not exactly as instructive as they should be because certain movies are not eligible for a screenplay nomination per those rules. This year, it's particularly notable because the power of the dog and Belfast are both not eligible for their respective screenplay awards. However, uh, original, you know, the BAFTA went to Licorice Pizza. The Critics' Choice Award went to Belfast. I would definitely pick Licorice Pizza as my personal choice. Or maybe even Worst Person in the World. I'd love to see that too. And that that would be be a huge win if Worst Person in the World actually got this. But... I feel like I could see this as like the here's the PTA bone, you know, here's a screenplay dub, and that's all you're going to win for the most, for, yeah, that's all you're going to win. That's that. Because like Belfast has kind of been like a soft, like contender and antagonist to Power of the Dog this whole time, this whole award season. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Belfast kind of come up short here. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised by that either. I think it, it probably is going to be licorice pizza. But I, uh, I don't know. I would love to see the worst person in the world. Stay, stay tuned to my Twitter. That I, I might put that call out there right, right beforehand. Yeah. I'm, I'm leaning heavily towards that. Um, best adapted screenplay. So we got Coda, Drive My Car, Dune, The Lost Daughter, and Power of the Dog. If Power of the Dog is going to take home Best Picture, which seems like a somewhat solid bet at this point, yeah, I think. 
this is going to be the category that's going to tip that off. However, if Coda could pull off the upset, this is where it's going to start, right? Coda did win the BAFTA. Power of the Dog won the Critics' Choice Award. And then Belfast won the Globe, but that's a combined screenplay award. So not a whole lot of info here. Again, Fuck WGA, the Golden Globes. WGAs haven't happened yet anyway. Um, yeah, there's, there's the Coda momentum. There's the Coda agenda happening right now in terms of winning Best Picture. And this is a big part of that happening, right? The whole reason this has started is because Coda won Best uh, uh, Ensemble at the SAG Awards. Effectively, the SAG Awards equivalent of Best Picture. And then Coda won the BAFTA for Adapted Screenplay. So there could be momentum here. This could be kind of uh, just a bit of smoke and that's it. But yeah, I... I'm going to torn. I'll pick Coda for screenplay, but I will not pick the next step that some people are picking for Coda later. We'll get to that. Um, you know, I think I think I'm going to go Power of the Dog in this category, but I don't know. I, I, I'm so interested to see how it goes at the Guild Awards coming up because Man, if Coda can pull off this upset, that would be quite the story for this. Well, like I said, Coda is likely going to win the Writers Guild Award. And again, Power of the Dog isn't even nominated there yep. because of the rules. So you'll see, again, more, quote unquote, momentum for Coda as we head into voting. Going to be interesting for sure. Um, all right. So we're passing the screenplays into the supporting actor categories. We got Kieran Hines for Belfast. Troy Kotzer for Coda, Jesse Plemons for Power of the Dog, J.K. Simmons for the Ricardos, and Cody Smith McBee, the Power of the Dog. Uh, Smart Money has been on McBee for some time now, but is Troy Kotzer throwing a little bit of a uh, little, little bit of doubt into that? Dude, the Smart Money has moved. That's what happened. <laughs> yeah, Troy Kotzer is gonna win this, dude. SAG Award win, so? BAFTA win. Cody has only won the Globe of the major things critics choice win for Kotzer as well. And importantly, the narrative, the code of narrative is there. Kotzer is giving these great speeches, obviously signing them at the SAG awards. He's like, he's like, I've been a member of SAG since 2001. This is like a great honor, you know, uh, it's really easy to root for him. And I feel like people are really happy to vote for him and it's a good, really good performance. So if McPhee wins here, then it's going to be a complete Power of the Dog onslaught, I think. You know, Power of the Dog is the most nominated film with 12 nominations. But it seems like the tide is officially turned. Troy Kotzer here. It's insane. Uh, when, when you watched Coda, could you have believed it was going to be coming down to some of these big categories? No, I mean, that's the thing, too. It's like, I liked Coda when we saw it. It came out on Apple TV Plus way back in August, and it's like, Apple's going to push this as their best picture winner. And we're all like, well, good luck to you. You know, it took Netflix <laughs> yeah. a long time to do this, but no, it worked. And now it might be working even more, you know, <laughs> just like how Apple very quickly won uh, comedy uh, Emmys for Ted Lasso. It's kind of the same thing. They're really moving quick here. So the, th the thing though with Coda is there's only three nominations, screenplay, concert, and best picture. That's mm -hmm. for me is the big hang up at picture, but, I think screenplay is very much in play, and Kotzer is bordering on a lock. So, uh, yeah, the fact that has even gotten this far is pretty crazy. It it really is a shame too, because <sighs> Smith McPhee is so good in Power of the Dog, but it really just feels like Kotzer is gonna take this one. That's that's my pick yeah. as well. I don't so. mind deferring to the older actor too. Cody Smith McPhee yeah. will be back for sure. Um, all right, best supporting actress we have Jesse Buckley. For the Lost Daughter, Ariana DeBose for West Side Story, Judy Dench for Belfast, Kirsten Dunst for Power of the Dog, and Anjanu Ellis for King Richard. I mean, the powerhouse that is DeBose. She's been running, it feels like a, a sure thing at this point, right? BAFTA, Globe, Critics' Choice, and SAG wins. She's undefeated thus far, campaigning hard as well. No reason to expect any change. Uh, she's gonna win and it's a fucking great performance so good for her yeah. she really wants it and she's gonna get it she's fantastic man um I, I also feel like that's gonna be a great moment you know she's gonna be very very flamboyant and yeah. out there theater and, girl 
yeah, it'll be it'll be fun to watch. So uh, put your money down on Ariana DeBose. Best actor. I mean, another category that to me feels pretty locked up, but we'll run down the nominees. Javier Bardem for being the Ricardos. Benedict Cumberbatch, Power of the Dog. Andrew Garfield, Tick, Tick, Boom. Will Smith, King Richard. And Denzel Washington, The Tragedy of Macbeth. He finally gets it, man. Will Smith. I mean, it's going to happen. Yeah, Blake DeBose, he's won everything thus far. You know, the the Cumberbatch uh, never really mounted the fight that we kind of thought. You know, uh, there was the fear early on that people really want Will Smith to win, but it'll, it'll be Cumberbatch winning because Power of the Dog is this unstoppable force. And even if Power of the Dog ends up coming out on top, uh, Will Smith has this one in the back, you know, and it's a, it's a narrative that uh, is really easy to see people wanting to invest in and vote for Definitely. and also thus yeah. justly earned even though cumberbatch is excellent as well yep 100 percent agree uh and you know i i'm i think that's gonna be another nice moment you know if we get the kotzer debose smith trio that's that's pretty strong and then you move forward and you look at best actress jessica chastain for the eyes of tammy faye olivia coleman the lost daughter penelope cruz for parallel mothers nicole kidman for ricardo's and Kristen Stewart for Spencer. Do we get another nice moment here and maybe Jessica Chastain finally breaks through? This is a really hard one to pin down. As we said before, the BAFTA field is completely separate from this field, so it doesn't mean anything. Uh, Nicole Kidman won the Globe. The, the musical comedy Globe went to Rachel Ziegler, who's not nominated. Chastain won the SAG and Critics' Choice Awards recently. You know, the early favorite Kristen Stewart hasn't won much of anything. And then Penelope Cruz has been bandied about a bit due to the more international nature of the Academy the past few years that she could be a dark horse. It seems like the winds are starting to blow for Chastain. That's Tammy Faye. But I don't think it's safe at all. I think you could absolutely see anybody win here. Olivia Coleman, um, she almost always wins. So it's really hard to pick against her and preferential balloting could benefit someone like her. You never know. Um, I guess the, the favorite is Chastain, but it's, it's a really close one. It's really hard to say. Yeah. I, I actually think if I had to choose, which I am, cause I'm on a podcast doing just that, yeah. I'm going to go Olivia Coleman. Um, yeah. She's, she's an awards darling. I think people just really love her. And you know, you kind of think about, what would make this show interesting? Getting Olivia Coleman up there making a speech is always interesting. So uh, I hope to see it. I think I think that's what we'll see. Is that your pick as well? Yeah, I feel like that's like the sharp pick. Yeah, I'd do it. Yeah, yeah, and that that'd be pretty wild. Just because it's like the one the one time people aren't picking Olivia Coleman, she wins anyway. You know, uh, she's also like the hottest act- actress going right now. So. Yeah. Kind of makes sense. This is her, what, third win then? Second? Yep. And don't forget the Emmy she's been winning too. It's uh, quite the laundry list the past like five years. Yeah. She's uh, she's a powerhouse for sure. Uh, best director. I mean, I feel like we can move past this pretty quickly. Paul Thomas Anderson for Licorice Pizza. Kenneth Branagh for Belfast. Jim Campion for Power of the Dog. Ryosuke Hamaguchi for Drive My Car and Steven Spielberg for West Side Story. Dave, who's going to win? Campion's won everything thus far, just won the Director's Guild Award. BAFTA Globe, Critics' Choice. It's uh, kind of been an anointing, an anointing award season for Campion, becoming the first woman, woman to be nominated twice in the category. And of course, we'll be waiting for the first time. Only what the uh, is it the seventh, eighth women woman to ever win Best Director? Although two in a row, of course, coming off Chloe Zhao. Really hard to uh, hard to deny, you know. I think uh, Spielberg getting nominated in like the was it like the sixth or fifth, fifth or sixth different decade in his career. That's like good enough, I feel like for him. Like that's crazy yeah. accomplishment. But can't be in like is like just the runaway train at this point, and yeah. and well earned. Like the power of the dogs greatest strength arguably is you know how that movie works yeah uh i think power of the dog gene campion is uh, a sure thing in this category best director 
Uh, out, out of the four others that are up there, is is PTA the one that you're most like, ah, too bad that they they haven't gotten one yet? Yeah, exactly. You'd love him to win. Um, yeah. Obviously, Hamaguchi, super inspired uh, nomination, continuing the trend of a lot more international directors getting in here the past few years. But yeah, yeah, PTA. Uh, he'll get it one day for oh, sure. For sure. And I, obviously, um, we wish we wish Denny Villeneuve was here. Surprise uh, snub with the nominations. Didn't expect that. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Denny. Uh, he, he makes good movies. I really like it. I really like it. It's great. Uh, best picture. So he got Belfast, Coda, Don't Look Up, Drive My Car, Dune, King Richard, Licorice Pizza, Nightmare, Nightmare Alley, The Power of the Dog, and West Side Story. Hmm. You know, I'm, I'm looking here, and uh, it, it feels like, like there's definitely like a top three, right? The Power of the Dog, um, Coda, and Belfast feel like yeah. three that are up there. Is there even another fourth that's even... In the I was going to say, can anything else even win? I don't know. Because, like, even Belfast almost, I feel like, is a step below Coda. And even Coda could be all smoke, no fire. We don't know. But, like, yeah. the Belfast wave never happened. You know? It's the crowd-pleasing thing that pe- people invested in thought could be the best picture winner. It turned out that that thought process wasn't wrong it just wasn't about belfast it was going to be about coda instead and yeah everything else you know just never happened licorice pizza west side story you know don't look up big hit adam mccabe d- darling could that be like the surprise movie polarizing best picture winner never seemed to bubble up that way so i think it's yeah. power of the dog or coda or belfast i think that is right and that is three but I would be absolutely floored if Belfast actually won. Yeah, I, th- I think if there's a fourth, it would be West Side Story just for name, director, yeah. you know, maybe. There's a lot of love in. and support for that movie. Like People really do like it. I, I think the, the hope that any of these have is that Power of the Dog, somewhat polarizing in terms of people being right. like, ah, you know, I didn't really love it. Ranked choice voting puts it lower. Maybe yeah, like exactly coda's number two a lot or west side story ends up being everybody's like two three behind coda or yeah power of the dog and it sneaks in that that's kind of the, the scenario but it feels like power of the dog's year i just don't know if i want that to be the outcome <laughs> the thing like is the though movie. yeah the thing is like i don't like i don't have as much enthusiasm for coda the way others do like i like the movie yeah. just fine but like I like Power of the Dog more, so I just rather it win. I it's not like the best like winner for like the storyline, you know, because as you said, it is a bit more polarizing or more muted praise sometimes. But the stuff that I would love to actually win, like like Rich Pizza or Drive My Car or Dune, like none of that's happening. So I don't mind it going the dog. It's all good. One thing that has come up. I just kind of want to hear your, your quick thought on this. So Campion won the BAFTA for Best Director, comes up, makes a speech, yeah. addresses Venus Williams directly and says, you know, unlike you, I have to play against the boys. And that makes this award, you know, special to me or something along those lines. Yep, she's I already gotta, apologized <laughs> the next day. Yeah. I got to say, Serena's face, uh, instant meme, uh, just fantastic. And I think everybody just was like, oh, God, why do you have to say that? She has apologized. I do wonder if maybe that could turn the tides a little bit with some of the stuff. I mean, the voting hasn't opened yet. Yeah, a very diverse voting body. Maybe there's a little something there. That would be hilarious if that was the case. <laughs> because you don't come at Serena. This is like the only way to lose when you're this dominant yeah. thus far is to shoot yourself in the foot. Now we have to find out if Campion actually lost any toes here. We don't know yet. Right. Yeah, that that's like the only hope I feel for Power of the Dog not taking home like best director and best picture. Um, those two things feel pretty solid in my mind. <sighs> I guess, Dave, give me like one upset. Maybe it's not what you're choosing, but something that you feel like has a good shot. Maybe you put a little bit of money down in like a second wager. Mitchell's versus the Machines animated feature. I think ah. going against Disney there, 
I'd support that one when very plausible, given that the win the wins thus far have been more spread out. Any award notably was not won by a Canto. So that's one I'd throw out there for sure that people are probably under under rating a little bit. Hmm. Obviously everyone knows the wild card nature of the screenplay category, so we talked about a worst person in the world actually winning yeah. original would be wild. Drive my car winning adapted would be awesome. Even Dune. I feel like Dune is such a unique yet deserving case here because it's a successful adaptation of something that was repeatedly called unadaptable. You know? It's a it's a unique, uncommon criteria for the award. And to me that makes it even more well deserved. Yeah. Uh I, I agree. I think that would be fantastic. Uh, I think if I had to pick one uh, one upset that maybe I'm not ready to choose quite yet, it would be the worst person in the world for best original screenplay. However, one super long shot. If this can't be in, you know, people not liking her coming at Serena and Venus in this way works out, put put a little bit of money down on Hamaguchi. Just just put like put like five bucks. Dude, yeah. I'd burn the house, my house down if that <laughs> happened. <laughs> I, I don't. I th- there's no evidence for it. Just a gut feeling. I feel like it'd be like a fun thing to see. And also, I, I think, you know, you see, you see, Bong Joon Ho have such a moment and such an anointing. And obviously, Drive My Car, much different movie than Parasite, not nearly as accessible as a, of a movie. For sure. But I think, I think there's something there. There's something to the. You know, this this is a great moment. People probably are going to love the film. Like film he- uh, film heads really love it. So maybe yeah. there's some some hope that this. I think the, the thing though is like Jane Campion is a Kiwi. She's also international. True. In a certain True. sense, even though she's white, so it still feels like there's so much support for her. So yeah, yeah. it really it really depends on how much like <laughs> this what you said it, changes minds. Yeah, and it's, it has to be at big shot. scale. Um, any anything else here? Anything that you want to shout out? What you want to look for? I just want to say again, I said this on Twitter. Supporting actor, really tough to have J.K. Simmons and to a lesser extent Jesse Plemons both get in there when Mike Faced from West Side Story was so present right to be nominated and yet was not. Tough, yeah. tough look, you know. Completely agree. Uh, yeah. And, you know, you, you, you just hope Mike Face starts getting uh, put in everything. He just is that that electric in it. Um, yeah, you know, just looking like scrolling through, I'm trying to see if there's anything here else that stands out. I mean, I, I hope I hope it's at least like a fun watch. You know, I hope they mm-hmm. can keep it tight. Um, I, I, I hope we get some good speeches out of it. I think with those actors that probably are going to win, I think we'll get some memorable right. moments. Probably I mean, Lin-Manuel moment as well. Yeah, right. And I mean, it, Dune, if Dune wins like six times, you know, that could be fun too. It was fun when Mad Max won a million times. Although all those will be off screen, right? <laughs> yeah, about half of them anyway. Yeah. It's off. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I know. It's, it's I mean, like we'll still things. see them. Yeah. It's just they won't just be live. Edited. It'll be more edited. It's like you don't watch them walk down the aisle and stuff. Right. Stuff like that. Yeah, the, the, those like first reaction moments are just so electric. You know, you think about the uh, obviously the um, moonlight moment is just so memorable. And it's yeah. it's not going to no award is ever going to live up to the best picture, you know, in that way. But like, like if you were did have a shocking moment like that, some huge upset that you just kind of lose something there. So, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, uh, follow us at Nostalgia Pod on Twitter. We'll probably be tweeting out a little bit during the show if anything notable happens. Uh, maybe we'll even put out a couple of uh, smart bets if, if you can find a place that will take some action on this. So yeah, that'd be sick. We'll be Let's looking go. forward to it. But anyways, uh, YouTube.com slash Nostalgia Pod. Give us that subscribe. Five stars on uh, Spotify as well. And we'll catch you next week.